Hey everybody, it's May, and today I need to set up my recipe plan with two new recipes. It's going to be Teeny's Mac and Cheese and Homemade Beef Stew. So if that seems interesting, just stay tuned. Okay, so if any of you watched this week's Play With Me, you'll know that my kiddo, Max, came home this weekend, and he wanted me to make my homemade beef stew. And before he even got here, he decided he was going to make it for me. And I'm going to tell you what, it turned out delicious. My baby did an amazing job, and we took pictures of it. I'm so proud of him. And here is the picture we took. Whoops, it's actually upside down. That is our homemade beef stew. As you can see, you stew, uh -huh. little shredded carrots. We got some little baby potatoes in there. Oh, it was so good, y'all. It was. Now, we forgot to take a picture of the homemade mac and cheese. But the home, the mac and cheese recipe that Max uses, um, it supposedly broke the internet a year or two ago. And it's by Teeny. And this is the picture from the website where the uh, recipe is listed. And we followed it to a T. And you have to grade... Um, grate up two pounds of fresh cheese, all kinds of cheeses, and my baby stood there. Him and his best friend, AJ, they grated that cheese. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I need to look back and see how I've been normally doing it. Okay, so I've got my little, my little bits and bobs over here in my drawer. Let me get some of this out. Okay, so what are we going to get out of this box? Let's get the black one. Is that going to show up? Probably not. Let's see the blue one as well. Let's see if there's any good stuff in here. Because my kiddo was looking through this and was like, I'll try to use it. It's like, I'll try, I'll try. I really will. So, if we can find a cheese grater, that'd be amazing. Because they had to stand there. I had to buy a cheese grater. Because that's kind of hard on my hands and I don't do it. So, when we went to the store... We actually picked up a fresh cheese grater, so I'm really happy. So, the next time he comes home, he's making a booger for me again. Yes, he is, because it was delicious, y'all. I had not had that. Ooh, it was so good. I'm not seeing a cheese grater, y'all. Do y'all see one? I see a cheese grater. <laughs> Check it out. We're going to do it. Yeah, we are. We're going to do it. And I might be able to get those mittens. Yeah. All right, so we'll use those two stickers. I know the cheese grater, definitely. And let me get some of these little elements from where um, I was asked to review it. So I'm thinking we need one that's kind of long. Could probably do this one. Let's see, with this sticker. Yeah, that would look good. And <laughs> since it is a very old recipe, family recipe, for the beef stew. I'm wanting like a very vintage-y looking one. Let's see. Let's try that one. We'll see. We'll see. Alright. So I got all my bits and bobs back in the box. Back in the box. <laughs> Alright. And I need my little highlighter that I've been using. Oh, let me grab it. Sorry guys. I should have had that already. Alright. So we'll deal with that. So the first thing we're going to write in is the beef stew. Okay. So, I think I want to go ahead and get it on the page. Now, I didn't print it on sticker paper, so I'm going to have to use a little bit of glue. Which means I'm definitely going to have to be on point here and get it in the video. I mean, on the page just right. Alright, are you clogged up? Let's get a pen. Let's get a pen. Let's get a pen. Put a pen in it. See if that helps. It should. It usually does. I cleaned this booger out. It likes to clog a lot. Oh, that's a little painful on my hands. I gotta remember, this glue is not nice to my hand. But you don't need a ton. It looks like I'm putting a ton on here, but I'm really not. It's really, really thin. Alright, so, the bowl was like something from the daggone little glue bottle. Alright, I'm gonna stick it like that. Alright. And, no, we did not eat the same thing. At, okay, I had beef stew without the mac and cheese. I took a taste of the mac and cheese, and it was delicious. Um, 
baby had, um, she loves the barbecue, he loves the barbecue hut here. So he had to go to the barbecue hut and get him some shredded pulled pork barbecue. And he had the uh, mac and cheese with it. And he had beef stew when he woke up this morning before they left. So it, he wanted all the goodies to eat while he was here. But, you know, you can't do everything, you know, one day you'll, you'll pop. So, it was really funny. I had the beef stew. And, I'm really happy because it stayed down. So, for the beef stew, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to leave that, like, right there. Let me see how many ingredients I need. I think I can get it on this burger right now. Sorry about that, guys. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty there. So, anyway, um, I'm not going to use the vintage paper for um, this one. I am going to do this really long time to cook. Because I think that would be pretty cool. Might have to end up trimming that. Let's see. Let's do the test this way. Do, 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 do. I wanted to curl on itself. Okay, so if I do it like this, it'll take up a whole darn page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I kind of like that, so hang tight. Let's just go ahead and get it. Mm -hmm. Let's put it back on here in case it don't work. Because <laughs> that's a long area to be fixing up. All right, so we're going to stick it on here, and we're going to fill it out. Yeah, we are. Okay, so we're going to do that first, then we'll put in the cooking time and everything else. So let me go ahead and move this over here, and let's go ahead and start writing down what we need in this recipe. Don't you curl up on me, you little booger. We're working with you. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want is two pounds of stew meat. Now, here's the trick to the stew meat, guys. You're going to want a lot of fat. You want a lot of marbling in that in that meat. You want to see that fat. And you don't want to trim it. If it's got big chunks of fat, you can trim that off. But you really want to try to leave a lot of fat on your meat. You don't have to eat it once it's stewed. You know, you, your meat should be so tender it's going to fall away from the fat. So you have the option not to eat that. You know what I mean? But if you get it super lean, it's never... I don't care how long you cook it. It's not going to get tender. So trust me. Get you some... Uh, Stew meat and make sure it's got a good amount of marbling with that fat in there. You're going to want three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I just put all flour. I know what that means. Um, we do a half a teaspoon. We do a couple half teaspoons here. Of uh, garlic, salt, and of pepper. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. You're going to do one onion. You either slice it, cube it, dice it, whatever you want to do. Okay? One whole onion. You're going to need six cups of beef broth. I'm going to go ahead and go down to the next line. You're going to want a half a cup of red wine. You know, red cooking wine. The drinking wine's good, too. Or... Five tablespoons of ketchup. It's your choice. I personally like the red wine. Max likes the ketchup. And last night, Max made it with ketchup. And I have to tell y'all, it was really good. So you're going to want one pound of potatoes. Okay? We like to use the little tiny stew potatoes. And we use the little golden and the little red. We put the purple ones in there last night. And I love the little purple potatoes. But... It, they have a very different texture, and it's a little off-putting, so we kind of all picked out our purple spuds last night. We didn't really care for it. You can do um, four uh, carrots cut up. Um, we personally do a cup and a half for the shredded carrots. It's just easier. Um, you could do the chips, the baby carrots, whatever you like. You're going to want uh, three stalks of celery. I personally don't like it with the celery, but you know each throw you're gonna want three tablespoons of tomato paste now I know we said ketchup up here okay but this is different you want three tablespoons of tomato paste okay you're gonna want two tablespoons whoops of uh, water okay now you could put peas if you want I don't like it we put one bay leaf. Of course, we take it out when it's done. We do one sprig of rosemary. Okay. Y'all are like, dang, this recipe's long. 
And you're also going to want two tablespoons, okay, of cornstarch. Now, Max will suggest, I'm going to put a little note here, um, several dashes of Worcestershire. <laughs> I cannot say that word. That will make it taste delicious, my peeps. It really, really will. All right, so let's go ahead and get this long list into the planner, and we can start decorating it up and writing out the directions. Oh my gosh, you guys, I was so excited that I was able to keep this down. This is really anything with a um, heavy amount of stock in it, like beef stock, chicken stock. I never do well with it since the surgery, and I was I coated my stomach with Galviscon before we ate dinner and let it have enough time to get in my tummy. And you guys, it worked. I was able to do it. Now, I crinkled my paper, and that's going to irk me. But you know what? It'll be alright. It will be alright. It's a homemade book, and we're all good. I am going to put the little pie holders down here, I think. Emma, Emma, let's do it. And we're going to cut them off. I'll put it like that. Where's my scissors? I got some scissors, don't I? Yeah. I got my little baby scissors here. Okay. Let me see. Which way should I go at it? Should probably go at it in this direction. Yeah, that's going to work. Cool beans to me. All right. So, we got it done. That's cool. I dig it. I really, really do. Okay. So, let's throw this little thing in the trash. Okay. So, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. All right. So, we need to get one. The name of the recipe. Okay. Where are my stickers that I made for this book? Here we go. Do, 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 do. We want the recipe or the script that says recipe. Oh my gosh, I am still like, I'm tripping on There is none left over. I really wish there was. But it's a good thing because it probably wouldn't have been eaten up with us. And so, um, yeah, me and Dad, we agreed. We were like, yeah, it's probably not a good idea that we save the leftovers because we're not going to eat them. I'm just looking for like a little label sticker if possible. Let me see if I can find one so I can put the word recipe, I mean, uh, ingredients on there. Let's see if we got one. A little sticker I could put up there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's do some of this. this. This is one of his favorite colors anyway, so we'll do it. Since it's his book. Oh my gosh, come on. Come on. And the best part of it was we ate dinner with TV. So we went into a papa and we had a nice dinner. And when the movie was over... We all went to the kitchen, and we cleaned it up. And I was like, really? You guys are even going to help me clean the dishes? I was, um, it's been a good weekend, y'all. It's been a very, very good weekend. All right, stop being a jerk. And I just cut my finger, y'all. Look at that. I'm going to have to pause and go get me a Band-Aid. Otherwise, I'm going to bleed like a stuffed pig on my child's book. I cannot believe, I told you guys, some days I just can't feel, you know, my fingers and stuff. Oh, I got to pause now. Sorry about that, guys. I can't believe I cut my finger like that. My goodness. And that little booger's threatening to come through the band-aid. I'm like, I know you're not about to. You better not, better not. Okay. Let me use this big paint scraper. I don't think that can hurt me. Good Lord. Ooh. But, it's to be expected. I've had a really long weekend. I've gotten so many things done. So, it's about right that my hands are a little aggravated, you know. I've been... Doing everything on my diet the way I'm supposed to, and I've been taking my flu pills and stuff, but, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to take a while for my hands to, like, actually behave and be good. So, I just need to fix my two right there. My pounds. Okay, so, where is that little sticker that said ingredients? I want to use this label right here. And I don't care if it goes or doesn't go. This is homemade. And Max is just really wanting it to look like Mom used everything in her disposal to hook it up. And I think that each week I'm actually lending to that idea. So the recipe is a beef stew. 
this was the highlighter I've been using. Okay. So, we're going to say cook time. Ooh, goodness gracious. Come over here a little better. I'm going to say cook time. Honestly, it's about eight hours in your crock pot. If you want it super tender and yummy, eight hours in crock pot. Now, of course, if you do it on high, you could probably get away with five or six, but you know. Um, for the servings, we're going to say depends because, I mean, it really depends on how many people you got for dinner. Because as far as I'm concerned, it could be for one person, this whole pot, and you just eat it day after day after day. It's probably going to be four to eight very easily, but you know. And there is no preheat in the oven. We've already done ingredients, so let's just get this word directions on a label and get after it. I'm going to fast forward you guys while I write it out, and then I'll tell you how you actually do it. There we go. Now let's get this booger right here. Let's go. Mm -hmm. mm, I don't like that. Let's do this. Do I like that? No. <laughs> I don't like none of that. Do, 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 do. Let's say family favorite. Let's do that. Let's do this. Okay. And then I'll put the sticker right on top of it. Yeah. Kind of dig that. That'll work. All right, so I'm going to fast forward you while I write it in, and then we'll find out how you make it. So, this is how you would make the beef stew the way we make it. You're going to get out a frying pan, okay? And on medium-high heat, you're going to put two tablespoons of olive oil in your pan. Let it get up to temperature. You're going to take all your stew meat, and you're going to start with three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. If you need to, add more. What I do is I get a Ziploc bag, a gallon size. I dump my meat in. I dump in my garlic powder and my salt and pepper. And then I throw in, you know, the all-purpose flour, the meat, garlic salt, I mean garlic powder, garlic salt, and pepper, and I shake it all up, and I put it in the frying pan, and I brown it, okay? I brown it very nicely. Then you're just going to take the entire pan, and you're going to set it over here. You're not going to drain any of the leftover oil, which you probably shouldn't have any. You're going to get all the bits from where the flour browned up in the pan. You're going to save all of that. It's super important. So next what you're going to do is you're going to dice up your carrots, your celery, your onion. And if you're using the little potatoes and the shredded carrots or baby carrots, you're going to leave them out at this point. You're not going to use your baby carrots or your um, potatoes at this point. You're going to put your celery and your onion and everything else with your stew meat, your six cups of beef broth, all into your slow cooker. Okay? You're going to add your red cooking wine. You're going to add all the rest of your ingredients. Okay? The sprig of rosemary. The bay leaf, the whole deal. Those little bits in the bottom of the pan of the crusted up, you know, off of flour, the meat, all of it. You're going to want to put your uh, slow cooker, our slow cooker, even on high, it's more like medium high. So we cook it for eight hours, okay? Um, three hours after uh, it's been on, you're going to want to open your crock pot lid. You're going to want to give it another nice stir. 
because you know you are stirring everything as you're putting it in the crock pot to start with you're gonna stir it in three hours and you're gonna go ahead and add your baby carrots or your potatoes okay I'm sorry your baby potatoes or your regular potatoes however whatever you use them okay so about an hour before it's done if you're using the shredded carrots that's when you're gonna to want to put those in there okay another good stir now 10 minutes before you're about to serve it uh, serve it you're gonna to want to make a slurry now if you are not very big on cooking and you don't know what slurry is a slurry is let's say you use two tablespoons of cornstarch in a cup you're gonna want two tablespoons of water and you're gonna mix it like you're gonna be scrambling eggs and you're gonna slur it all into the crock pot and you're gonna stir it really well Put your lid back on for 10 minutes. What that does is it takes that very watery beef broth and the flour and everything that's in your beef stew and it makes it a little thicker like stew. And that's why you call it a slurry because you just kind of slur it in. And you guys, look at that picture. It is so delicious. I promise you'll love it. Okay, so let's go ahead and under sides, let's do this recipe, the teeny mac and cheese. Now this, this darn thing when I printed out because kids made it I've never made it and it was good I'm not gonna lie to you um it was a lot of work for these kids I felt sorry for them I really did <laughs> so let's see how did I do it on this side I did the word recipe so let's go ahead and get that yeah we had to go to the store and buy a whole bunch of cheese got the cheese grater it was really nice and uh they were asking me if I had cat cava tappy or something uh we call it noodles and I was like no and basically they wanted corkscrew macaroni noodles I was like oh girl let's just go to the store and get that so I guess we're gonna call this teeny and since my baby introduced it to me Max's mac and cheese I think it's cool it was very delicious and my dad liked it and he's been on a mac and cheese kick and I was thinking yeah you better like it all right so the next sticker we had was cook time. Now, they cooked the noodles and all that stuff, so I don't know if I should add that into the cook time. This is Max's book, and Max knows how to make this recipe. Where is all them stickers at? There they are. So, I don't think I'm going to add the cook time for like a stove top on there. I don't think I should have to. It took them about like maybe 20 minutes, because they got to boil the noodles. They made a roux. It took about 20 minutes. And then you have to put it in the oven. Oh, it was so good, y'all. It was so good. How did I do this? What's the first one? First one is cook time. Dorcasaurus. So we'll just say an hour total. How about that? We'll say one hour. Between the prep and the time it's in the oven. Gonna preheat your oven to... And I'm gonna have to read the recipe because the kiddo fell, followed the recipe to the T. Yes, him did. Alright. Servings. An army. It was a lot of daggling. Uh, and, and Max said he only did half the recipe. I'm like, really? It was almost a full casserole dish. Where does sticker go? There it is. Y'all, I'm cutting myself, losing stickers. I don't know what I'm doing. Say an army. And that's what I'm putting. Army. Because that's about an army's worth of, of food, in my opinion. Alright, so we're going to preheat the oven to servings. Cook time did that. All right, so we just got ingredients and directions left. Okay, so let's get this booger on here. All right. So the ingredients. I probably should put down this picture. What do y'all think? Think I should get this picture on here? I want to see if I can get all of these on one of these boogers here. Hmm. I just don't know. <laughs> I can tell I'm getting tired, y'all. I am telling. I'm telling you, I can seriously tell it. <laughs> anyway, let me get my picture on here first, right? Let's see. Let's do it on this way. I'm gonna make it straight up and down, and then I'm gonna put the cheese grater sticker on here, and then I'm gonna write everything around it. I can tell I have done a lot this weekend. I really have, and I have got a busy week coming up too. So it'll be all right. We're getting stuff knocked out left and right, and I'm kind of happy. That's what you're supposed to do, right? All right. So let's put this gorgeous picture of this mac and cheese in here. Y'all, I'm telling you, it's so good. I had never heard of this recipe, but I'm going to tell you what. It was delicious. So I'm going to put the cheese grater, like, right about in there. 
Okay, so let's start writing down all these dirt ingredients. I couldn't believe how much cheese they were putting in the card at Ingalls, y'all. I was like, what? Now, I'm not going to put a cavata patty or I can't say the word, y'all. It's C-A-V-A-T-A-P-P-I -P -P noodles. I'm going to say one pound of corkscrew noodles. Because <laughs> that I can say. Corkscrew noodles. All right. So, I'm going to put a little thing beside each one because, y'all, it's a lot. We're going to do 16 ounces of mozzarella cheese. Yep, yep. We're going to put 16 ounces of Colby Jack. We're going to say 8 ounces of cheddar cheese. Do, 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 do. Almost lost my pen on that one. Okay, you're gonna need one teaspoon of garlic powder. Oh yeah, I remember that because Max got upset that after we had cooked the beef stew, I put away all my spices. <laughs> he was like, I had everything out and I'm like, oops. <laughs> I put it all away, I'm so sorry. So it's gonna be one teaspoon of the garlic powder and it's gonna be one teaspoon of smoked paprika. And you can go a little over if you like, because I know Max did. So, it's also going to be a half a teaspoon of salt. Then a half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay. Like I said, this is, they say this is the mac and cheese that broke the internet, y'all. Three tablespoons of butter. We used margarine because I don't have any butter in the house. I'm not making cookies at the moment. Three tablespoons of flour. And I gave him all purpose. There's no, I mean, generally when a recipe does not specify self-rising, in case most people don't know, you just go ahead and use all purpose. Okay, so it was 12 ounces. Got to put my little dot. 12 ounces of evaporated milk yes it was yes it was what else was it like I said I printed it out so I could have it I didn't want to hold him up make him write it down okay so it's gonna be two cups this is a very heavy recipe y'all two cups of heavy whipping cream I'm sorry of heavy cream not whipping cream good lord that'd be so different and one tablespoon it sounds weird but it makes it right Dijon mustard okay yes it is yes it is so I am gonna put this down here it says great food and great company and I think it's funny because we used a greater that's why I want it then I'm going to put actually I'm going to put this here to signify that that's the end of the ingredients I don't trust my scissors at the moment so I'm going to use my paint scraper. All right. Then I'm going to put another label like this one. And I'm just going to do it like that. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm going to fast forward you. And then I'm going to read the directions to you.
Hi guys, so I'm having to voice this part over because I totally screwed the pooch on this recipe when I told you how to make it. So let's go ahead and let me tell you how you actually make it. What you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to cook your noodles and you're going to drain them when they're done and set them aside. Now you're going to take that one pound of mozzarella cheese, the one pound of Colby Jack cheese, and the eight ounces of cheddar cheese, and you're going to freshly grate it into a large bowl. Once you've done that, you want to mix all three cheeses together very well. Blend them all up in the same bowl. Then you're going to divide it into half. You're going to put half of that cheese into one bowl and half into another bowl. Okay? So now what you want to do is put your butter into your frying pan. And you want to add all your spices. You want to add the garlic powder, the salt and pepper, your flour, and your smoked paprika. Okay? And you're just going to be making a roux. So you're going to keep going over your medium-high heat until a roux starts and it gets nice and thick. And then you're going to add in your heavy cream and your evaporated milk and your Dijon mustard. Okay? So now you're going to stir and stir till it starts getting thick. Then a handful at a time, one of those bowls of cheeses, a handful at a time you're going to put into that, that roux and gravy mixture. And you're going to make sure it melts as you're stirring it until you have used all the cheese in one of the bowls. Okay? So then what you're going to do is you're going to put in your pasta and you're going to start stirring it. You're going to pour that into your greased 9 by 13 baking or casserole dish, okay? But you're going to layer it like a lasagna. You're going to put down some of that melted cheese in the noodles and then some more of the fresh grated cheese that is in your bowl that you have for the reserve. And you're going to do layer after layer after layer. Now, if you look at the top of the page, I wrote 45 minutes bake time. That's absolutely wrong. You only want to bake it for like 25, maybe 30 minutes. And before you go to serve it, about five minutes before, you want to get it on broil your oven to give it a really nice, crusty, cheesy top. Okay, so this is how you actually make it. Not the way I had said originally. I hope that made sense. So that is our recipes for today. So... I did find these cool looking little carrot stickers, okay? And I'm going to put this little serving pot up here because you use the serving pot to make your noodles. <laughs> so I think it's kind of cute. So we're going to go back here to soups. And my favorite part of the soup is not only the potatoes because you know we're Irish. I love the carrots. So I'm definitely going to put the carrots onto this page. So here is my beef stew recipe. And then back here is the mac and cheese that broke the internet by teeny and my child max introduced it to me and it was delicious y'all so until i see for another recipe y'all have a nice day bye